this video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom switch using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. Right now in the head tag, I only have the link for Font Awesome, which we will use for the icons later on. Then I have the body tags, which are empty. In the CSS, I have some variables declared in the root, and then I have a margin and padding set to zero, and also a box sizing of border box. So initially, I'm going to write all the HTML code, and then I'm going to add all the styling and animation within CSS. So I'm going to go into the body tag, and within the body tag, first I'm going to set a div with a class of switch container. So this will contain the entire element. I'm going to put all of the code for the actual switch within this container. So initially I'm going to set an input with a type of checkbox. And I'm going to set the ID of this to switch. Then I'm going to place another div inside of here that will have a class of switch color. The reason why I'm adding this class of switch color is because I want an area of the switch to actually change color depending on which state the switch is in. So if it's on the on state, I want it to be green. And if it's in the off state, I want it to be gray. That is why I'm adding this other div. Beneath that, I'm going to add a label and the label will be for this input with an ID of switch. So that's why I'm writing switch over here. So this is actually all the code that we're writing for the HTML and everything else will be completed within the CSS. Now you might be wondering, why did I put an input type checkbox? The reason why I decided to move forward with a checkbox is because a checkbox can have one of two states. It can either be in the on state or the off state. And so we're going to take advantage of this HTML element and then add properties to it. So that way it actually transforms from being in one state to another state. So I'm going to utilize this component, but dramatically change how it appears on the page. If you're interested in more of these checkbox animation tutorials, I have a video that goes over how I transform a hamburger menu into a clothes icon, and it follows the same kind of properties as this one. I'll link that video in the description below. Okay, so now I'm going to start by jumping into the CSS. So for that CSS, initially I'm going to call the body tag. And for the body tag, first I'm going to write display grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all the basics of grid. So I'll link that video in the description below as well. And I want everything to be in the center. So I'm going to write justify content center and align item center. I'm also going to set the height of this to 100% of the viewport height because I want the body to take up the whole page. Next, we're going to add characteristics for the actual switch container class, which is that initial div that wraps the whole element. So in here, I'm going to reference that switch container. And for this container, I'm going to initially set a specific height and width. I'm also going to set a border radius. Then to actually help us see it on the screen, I'm going to add a box shadow and I'm going to set it to a specific gray color that I defined earlier. So now we can actually see our switch container on the page. Next, I'm going to set the position of this element to relative. And the reason why I'm setting this position to relative is because I'm going to set some other attributes to absolute and I want those elements to be in reference to the actual container. Next, I'm going to skip going over that switch color. I'll leave that till the end. I'm going to initially work on the label. So I'm going to reference the label. And for this, I'm going to set its own particular width and height. And I want this to be a circle, so I'm making the width and the height the same values. I'm also going to set the same border radius. I'm going to set the background color to white, which right now doesn't make a difference, but it will make a difference later on when we have that background color. I'm going to set the position of this element to absolute. 
and I'm going to add a margin top and left. Right now we can't really see it on the screen, so I'm going to add a box shadow for this element as well. I'm going to copy and paste the box shadow that we used earlier, but then add some different modifications to it. So I don't want it to be as harsh as the actual container, so I'm making it a little bit more subtle. And I also want this element to pop a little bit more from the background, so I'm going to set the Z index to a very high value. I'll just set it to 99. So that way this element is definitely above everything else on the page. Now when I hover over this element, it doesn't look interactive because the cursor doesn't change to a pointer. So then in the CSS, I'm writing cursor and then pointer. So when I hover over it, it actually looks like an interactive element. Next, I want the actual label to change how it looks depending on which state that the checkbox is in. So overall for this label, I want the label to be in one of two states. It's either in the on state or the off state. If it's in the off state, I want it to have certain characteristics and properties, like having a close icon. But when it's in the on state, I want it to have the check icon. And so the way that we're going to accomplish this is by using the before and after pseudo elements. And that way we can transform how it looks depending on which state that the checkbox is in. So beneath this, I'm going to add properties for the before element. So I'm writing label and then double colon before. And so for that before element, I want it to look like it has a close icon. So I'm writing font family and I'm going to reference fonts awesome. So I'm writing quotes and then font awesome five free, which is just the library that I'm referencing. For this, I have to set a particular font weight and I'm going to set a font size. Now we don't see any icon on the page and that's because we didn't identify which icon we're going to use yet. So I'm going to reference which icon I'm going to use in the content tag. So for content, I'm referencing the certain ID of the icon I'm using. And now we can actually see the close icon on the page. For this, I'm going to set the position to absolute and I'm going to set a left and top margin as well. So that way it looks a little bit better in place. And that black color looks a little bit harsh, so I'm going to set it to the other variable that I defined earlier. This is looking really good so far, so I have a label with an icon in the center of it. But now I want to add the after property, so when someone taps on this, I want this to look like it's transforming into a check icon. So I'm going to reference the after property now. And for that after property, I'm going to copy and paste a lot of the values I used for the before property, but then modify some of them. So for that content, I'm going to change it to a different icon and I'm going to modify some of the alignment. And initially we don't want the two icons to be on top of one another. So I'm actually going to set the opacity of this to zero. So that way the check appears to be hidden, but it's actually on the page. Next, I'm going to add some properties to verify when this input is actually checked. So when it is checked, I want it to behave and look differently. So right now when I tap on this label, it actually changes the state of that checkbox from being unchecked to checked. So we are going to take advantage of this in our code. So beneath that, I'm going to add different properties for when that switch is checked. And the way that I'm going to do that is by first referencing the ID of switch, which is actually the input type. So if this ID of switch is checked, I want it to affect a sibling element. So input is right here and label is right here. They're on the same level playing field in the HTML. So it's not a parent child relationship. It's actually a sibling. So I'm going to use the tilde sign to represent sibling. And initially, I'm just going to say, look at the before property and make the opacity zero. So this will verify if what we're doing is actually working. So if I tap on this label, I'm expecting this icon to disappear. So I tap on it and it disappears. So I know that this code is working. So I actually want the close icon to disappear when it is tapped on, but I want the check icon to appear. So I'm going to duplicate this code but change it for the after property. So remember, initially I set that after property to an opacity of zero because we did not want the check to be visible when the input was not checked. Well, when it is checked, I actually want it to transform to an opacity of one. 
So now I'm expecting that when I tap on this label, the close icon will disappear and the check icon will appear. I tap on it and that's exactly what happens. It is essentially switching the icons from one of two states. It's either the close icon or it's the check icon. So now that we got the function of this working properly, I can add some really cool color and transition effects to make this actually come to life. So I want the switch to actually rotate and move over when it is checked. So to do that, I'm going to reference that ID of switch again, see if it's checked. And if it is checked, I'm going to affect the actual label. So remember this circle is the label and right now it looks like it's pinned to the left area. I'm going to want to make this animate all the way to the right side when it is checked. So for that label, I'm going to apply a transform of translate. I'm going to make it move in the X direction, 14 EM. And I also want it to rotate. So I want this to look like it's actually rotating over. So I'm going to write rotate and I want this to rotate in the Z direction, 360 degrees. So it looks like it makes one full revolution. So now when I tap on it, it looks like it pops to this place. And when I tap on it again, it looks like it immediately pops to that place. So in order to see the actual translation and rotation, I'm going to apply a transition to this. So it actually looks like it's animating. So here I'm going to reference that switch again. And here I'm not going to put checked. I'm only going to put the tilde sign and then label. And that's because I don't want this transition to only be applied when it is checked. I want this transition to play whenever the switch is tapped on. So when that switch is tapped on, I want there to be a transition of all the properties that takes one second. And for the animation curve, I'm going to set it to a curve that I set up earlier. So now when I tap on this, I expect some kind of animation to occur. I tap on it and it animates and rotates. This is looking really cool so far. So now that I know that everything is working properly at the bottom, I'm going to write input display none because we no longer need this on the page. So that will hide that original checkbox. So the last thing I'm going to do is add a color to the background here to kind of verify to the user which state that they are in, if they are in the off state or the on state. Now you could apply other colors to different elements on the page, but I am actually going to transform this div class of switch color. So I'm going above that label element and referencing that class of switch color. So for this class, I'm going to set certain values for the width and height. I'm going to set a margin top and left. I'm going to set the background color for this to match another variable that I set earlier. And now we can actually see it on the page. It doesn't look that great and we have to fix some characteristics about it. So I'm going to set the border radius to match the other radius that we're using. I'm going to set the Z index to a negative value. I'm going to set the position of this to absolute as well. So now we have this background color that's placed inside this container and it doesn't matter whether I'm in the off state or the on state, it always remains this gray. So I actually want this to transform into a green color when it is checked. So I'm going to go down here and again, going to verify when that switch is checked. So I'm going to write when that switch is checked, I want it to transform that div color. So I'm going to set the background to a different color. So here I'm just going to add a different color. So now when I tap on it, there's an actual transformation between the gray and the green. Now this happens very quickly without any kind of animation between the gray and the green. So I'm going to copy that transition curve that we applied earlier for the label. And I'm going to apply that for the actual switch color. So now when I tap on it, there's an animation. I actually think that color transformation happens a little too slowly. So instead of it being one second, I'm going to set it to 500 milliseconds. So now as I tap on it, it animates. So there you go. That's how I created a completely custom switch using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.